We'll call the meeting to order. Are there any uh, guests or are you ready to go, Todd? I believe so. I pressed the button, okay. so you should be good to go. Okay, good. Thanks. I just sometimes we for, we're getting so used to this that we just forget there's technology involved. One of these days we're going to get scared when we see a real person in life. I don't know. It's uh, it uh, it's certainly uh, it's different. <laughs> So are there any guests or uh, applicants in attendance that we know of? Not that I know of, Clarence. Okay, thanks, Shanna Lee. Okay, so we need no one to be excused from the meeting. And the minutes from April the 8th were circulated. How do you wish to handle them? Yubi? Moves as circulated. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing no one coming forward, all in favor? Okay, those are passed. Are there any post agenda items? Seeing none, could we have a motion for the adoption of the agenda, please? Alan moves. All in favor? That is passed. And we're on to our development permits in Channelly. Thank you. Um, development permit 2021022 is for the construction of an accessory building and approval of an existing accessory building with a variance to the distance to the right of way. The existing primary building was approved in 2007. The applicants are proposing to construct an accessory building that will be comprised of four shipping containers on all four corners and enclose the building with walls and a roof. Um, the building will be used for storage. The land use bylaw states that accessory buildings um, must be three meters from other structures on the parcel. The applicant intends to have the shipping containers two sides um, abutting, leaving no setback in between. So we're requesting a variance for the setback between the containers. There's an existing historical um, cold storage building on the parcel. According to the assessment records, this building was constructed prior to 1980, therefore does not have a development permit. The land use bylaw states that no part of a building shall be located within three meters of the registered right of way. This historical building is um, 1.8 meter of the registered right of way and therefore they're requesting a variance for that. The Eastern Irrigation District owns the right of way and they have provided a letter that they have no issues with the building being staying where it is currently located. We have no issues or concerns from staff. There was no response from adjacent landowners. Um, Alicia, Alicia Bartlett from the City of Brooks circulated to her IDP members and they had no issues on their end. We're recommending approval with conditions. Okay, questions anyone? Lionel? Uh, yes, um, the right of way. I'm, I'm a little bit confused about the right of way. So, on the north side of the property, that right of way runs west into the next property, also. Just kind of curious as to what. You know why that is. I just I don't quite understand that. Jeff, do you want to take the question regarding the right of way? Yeah, sure. I, I, I can help out with that. So that um, that right of way there is an EID pipeline. So that that pipeline runs through the parcel and then runs east west across all the parcels in the Martin Industrial Subdivision, adjacent to the south side of uh, uh, Township Road eighteen four Silver Sage. There. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. I didn't understand that. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Lionel. I have a question about the construction. Um, so they're building a, a stub wall on top of the 
these um, containers and then putting trusses on top of that. What is the height of that stub wall? I, unless I missed it somehow, I didn't see it on the drawing and I, I just was just curious as to how high the structure is going to be. Uh, the, the the height that they have listed on their application is 14 meters. So would that be to the peak of the building? That is correct. Okay. which doesn't tell you. Yes, Lionel. Um, okay, 14 meters. That, like I'm thinking about wind and, and um, there, there's a lot of wind resistance. That's, you know, a structure that tall and only eight feet of the bottom has, you know, is attached to the ground. Uh, just. That just seems a little bit odd to me that it could be built that high. So what what do we have in our bylaws and or whatever which guarantees that these these types of buildings are structurally sound. The the sound. building will sorry the building will um, will require um, all of the construction permits and it will have to pass the Alberta Building Code to make sure that it is secure that the everything is secure to the ground and to each other. So like it will involve a building of that size will involve three inspections. Um, as well as, you know, how the shipping containers are sitting on the parcel also. Brian? Just clarification, I heard you say 14 meters. You sure that's not 14 feet? Because it just, I'm looking at the building diagram here and it seems to me that that 14 meters, that's, like Lionel said, that's very, very high. That's uh uh, you're approaching 40 feet there. So I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just asking a question. I'm looking at the diagram and, and to me, 14 feet is a little bit more logical than 14 meters. Sorry, that was my mistake. You are correct. It is feet. Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion to approve. Yeah, and I, that that's fine. And I'm guessing 14 feet. But if it's if the diagram is to scale, and secans are eight feet, a little over, two by six wall there isn't eight feet, so uh, it might be six. So eight and six is 14. So I'm thinking that's the height of the wall, but that's just that's a farmer looking at the drawing, so. Anyway, we've got a, mo mo a, mo a motion in front of us to go ahead as recommended. Are there any further questions, Kelly? So, um, it, you referenced the drawing and isn't it a prize? Um, do we not require um, anything better than what was provided to us? And so um, on our um, uh, on our informative um, under conditions of development approval, why do we not have um, a fifth um, indicating what our height restriction is? I've seen that in other. Um, situations, other organizations where height is included. So then we would have that information in our informative. Just a thought going forward. 
anything about it this time. But I, I do think that we, we could require better plans than what was provided. Jeff? I, can I respond to that? Oh, sorry, no, Jeff. No, you but, can, yeah. I, I, just, I just noticed Jeff had his hands up. Fine, whoever wants to respond from staff, go ahead. Um, Kelly, I just, or um, Councillor Christman, I just wanted to mention that there, the, the drawing that they gave us is to, to show us how it's going to sit on the land. They will be required to have a substantial better diagram when they hand in their building permit to go to Park Enterprise to be reviewed and approved. Lionel? I'm going back to the height again because they have overhead doors that are 14 feet high. So this building has to be quite a bit more than 14 feet to put a 14 foot overhead door in. On their drawing, it says overhead door 16 by 14. So I've got to ask MPC a little bit, are we not to getting into building codes, which really aren't our responsibility, but our inspection responsibility here. Are we not more concerned? Um, I mean, do we really judge if a building is sound or not? We just, are we not responsible more for where the building is situated? Just, just wondering if we're getting into areas which really aren't our area of expertise and are overstepping our boundaries. Jeff, I, uh, I I think that's a very fair comment. Um, in our role at this meeting here is to uh, uh, permit the actual footprint of, of the site and, and the layout of the building on the site. Um, understanding there is a little bit of uh, uh, discrepancy between the building height uh, from what the plan show, what the application shows, everything else. I, uh, having a quick look in our, our rural industrial area, we, we don't, uh, from what I see, list a maximum height, so it is left at the discretion of the development authority. Um, so, so there are no maximums. You, you know, in some residential districts, acreage residential and hamlet residential, we do list maximums, but uh, from, from what I can see in our rural industrial district, we do not. Um, as for the structural integrity uh, of whatever's being constructed on site, that, that is the responsibility of the, the Safety Codes Council and, and, and uh, furthermore uh, on us and Park Enterprises by being an accredited municipality to issue those permits. So the, the, the structural capacity of developments is handled from the Alberta Building Code side as, as opposed from the development permitting side. Thank you, Jeff. Alan? Approve with conditions. We, we've already got that. Thank you. Anything further? All in favor? Anyone opposed? And that is passed. Could we go on to our second one, please, Channel Lee? Development permit 2021024 two, is to install a manufactured home two with an addition um, and a deck. The age of the manufactured home is 2001. In addition, the approval of a historical garage and agricultural building. There is an existing single family dwelling on the parcel, which will be removed when the manufactured home is installed. The applicant's intention is to build a new single family dwelling within the next three years. Um, the applicants are requesting to use a holding tank as a method of septic disposal for the manufactured home as they plan to build a new septic field to service the new dwelling in the future. There's a historical garage and, and agricultural building included in this permit. Because these are considered agricultural buildings, there is no assessment record to determine the age of the buildings. However, they are on, on our oldest air photo, which is the year 2000. The landowner has said they're much older than the year 2000. The garage is currently being used as an agricultural building, but may be converted to a garage in the future. The historical agricultural building on the east side of the parcel is located 4.6 meters from the property line. They're requesting a variance of 
meters, bringing the 7.5 meter down to 4.6. We are recommending the minimum security deposit for the manufactured home of $5,000. There was no issues or concerns from staff and there was no response from adjacent landowners. Thank you. Questions or comments? Kelly? Mike? question is around um, the removal of the second home. We've seen it in the past where um, the home is not removed. So what, other than the applicant saying that it will be removed, what do we have to go by? And then do we just let it go as we have in the past? We, um, Emily or Maria, it doesn't matter. You okay. both had your hands up. My, my comment is that we, we do not go out and, and inspect the land for the manu or for the original house to be removed. Um, we would find out at, um, when our assessor goes and does, when he goes around and he checks that we would find out at that point if the house has been removed. Um, I'll let Maria add to that. Emily, that that's what I was going to say as well. Right, right now we don't go around policing um, if structures have been removed or not, um, and, and that could be at a decision that MPC makes. Um, it, maybe the house doesn't have to be removed, but um, I believe that this applicant indicated that they they were wanting to remove the house, which is why it was um, included in this application. So I guess I would say two things. Um, would we not approve it if this now turned out to be a second dwelling? I'm, I'm not suggesting that, but I am suggesting that we have yards um, in general throughout the county with two homes with only one blue sign. So, so that put um, that puts the, the second home as unregistered or um, detectable by, by emergency services. So That's Kelly, would we, would we not treat that the same as all the other things which have, we have no variances for and all that type of thing? There's, there's, a, there's a myriad of stuff and I think what our staff is saying, we would we would uh, find that out the next time they come forward and and if, if there's things that have to be approved we we usually always approve them unless there's there is stuff that is affecting people that we hadn't that we hadn't thought of before so i i don't know i'm not, you know, I'm not sure it's a big deal but i will make the motion thank you mm -hmm. Any further questions or clarifications, Brian? Um, in regards to the removal of the home, I think it, in this case, I mean, I don't think it's tied to the actual $5,000 deposit, but couldn't that be part of it? Is that you don't get your refund until all the conditions are met, which is the house has to pass its inspections and um, the old home has to be removed. And yeah, and I guess my question is, you know, unless someone's living in it, are we really concerned if they use it for storage? And would we or would we not approve it just just because? And so I, I think we're getting hung up on something that we really don't need to get hung up on. Just my comments. It's your, it's at your discretion. Brian, did you want to make further comments? No. Anyone else? Lionel? Well, I think there is a necessity to ensure that these old homes are removed. Otherwise, you could wind up with, with multiple places with, with 
with uh, decrepit buildings on them. And I, 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 I would like to see the that condition to where you did have to remove the old home. So is that the um, are you that a, a condition? Because we'd so, have to vote on that first of all. Yeah. Kelly, I was I was just going to say that um, especially when the applicant puts that in their plan, why would we not add that to the to I. I just think it makes sense to follow up with their plan and support their plan. Just my thoughts. And I would be open to adding that to the motion. Okay. Shana Lee? I just wanted to mention that the, the condition that the, the dwelling be removed is listed as condition D. Um, so I just want to understand, so the, the, what we're adding is that the $5,000 security deposit is refunded only after the house is removed, correct? I guess if that is a condition, do we really have to have that added? I mean, would you actually refund it without all conditions being met? I generally I ref, I refund the five thousand dollars when all of the safety codes have been approved and closed. So that would be for the new building, all of the safety codes to make sure that it is it is safe. Um, it wouldn't be every condition on here, no. Okay. And I'm understanding that there are at least two councillors that would now like to add that as a condition before this is is refunded. Wayne. Because I think we're just getting too too involved in what people do on their own properties. Like Clarence, you said, what if they change their mind and they want to keep it for storage? Uh, it's not up for us to make decisions like that. And uh, I think we just leave it alone. If, uh, if they want to remove it, and it sounds like they do, they will. But if they had changed their mind in two years saying, oh, you know, that's that's valuable. Let's keep it to store whatever in it. But they have to take it out to get the $5,000 back. That's, I don't think that's up to us to make that decision. Okay, I've got Brian and then Lionel and then Anne-Marie. Well, I think Anne-Marie was first. But anyways, um, totally disagree with you, Wayne. Um, it's a condition. We have landowners that are diligent in doing it why can't we be consistent as far as what our application of this rule is and you know if we're going to sort of turn a blind eye to one and the other one is diligent and and i know we're in council but i mean lionel you face this personally you were required to, to remove your old house when you built your new one it was done within a time frame and you complied and um, and i know there's several others or many other people in there in our communities that have done the same thing and now we're going to say well it's okay to just turn the other cheek or blind eye. I don't, I don't agree with it. I think that this thing needs to be part of the part of it's a condition that's listed here. The, uh, the applicant is understanding of that. And um, we need to be, uh, I think, as consistent as possible when it comes to this. If they come to us with a very good reason to either move it or upgrade it or turn it into something different, we'll let them do that. But I think that the condition in front of us is to remove the building and this is a way to see it gets done. Okay. Anne-Marie. Yes, go ahead, Anne-Marie. Um, I'm just going to throw in one different angle because uh, I, I like to see cleanups on, on properties. But we have a bylaw that says the $5,000 is as a deposit for the building that you're bringing in and to make sure that this, in this case, it's a 20 year old mobile home that it will um, be checked and be properly installed. So are we going against this bylaw by saying now, or you're not gonna get your $5,000 back until you um, finish another condition? Good question. 
and 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 I and I'm 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 starting to think that what we're really debating here is whether, when we have conditions, whether we should be refunding without those conditions being met. To me, uh, maybe staff can comment on that, Jeff. I, uh, I, I think we uh, are kind of going down a bit of a rabbit hole here and we're talking about a number of, of different things that all kind of have, have different processes. Um, one of them being conditions and satisfying conditions of the development permit. Um, we are, uh, you know, another one that we've talked about here is enforcement um, of the land use bylaw and, and uh, going out and, and following up on things. So the, the, the option that we do have, you know, if people don't uh, fulfill the conditions of their development permit is, is to go ahead and, and, and you know, work with them. Um, right now, we, we don't have any fines associated in our land use bylaw, but we, we could go to the extent of issuing a stop order on, on the parcel. Um, I, I think that uh, in, in this case, uh, you know, just as a suggestion, we're working with the landowner in, in, in their request to keep, to, to remove that um, home. So uh, if that wasn't their, their decision and their request, we would have tried to permit this differently probably as a second dwelling on the parcel as opposed to uh, just, just the primary dwelling. Uh, we, we run into issues like uh, Councillor Christman mentioned with addressing and addressing dwellings. So the distinction between a dwelling and a building used to store materials is rather important when it comes down to the rest of our processes. Um, uh, and to expand on it a little bit more, you know, in, in working on this new land use bylaw that we're creating, um, we are identifying a lot of these things and some of those things are um, re receiving a little bit more uh, hard nose direction on enforcement and, and how the department's going to deal with that. Um, realistically, right now, it, enforcement is completed on a complaint driven basis. Um, we, we don't have the resources or, 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 or time and manpower to get out and, and search out these enforcement issues. And, and realistically, the, the previous direction that, that uh, uh, we've read to be provided is, you know, uh, deal with it as, as, as it comes up. And, and, and if a development is um, causing issues to someone, the complaint comes in and we enforce based on that. Like I say, with, with this new land use bylaw, some of the processes that we are going to work on is following up with development permits and ensuring that when a permit's issued, not only is it issued and it's done, that all of the conditions of that permit are going to be satisfied and, and we have that final close off step to say, yeah, yes, the conditions of the permit were satisfied. You know, if, if in this situation uh, we, we approve the motion as recommended on the RFD um, with the condition to remove that that dwelling in one year, if that dwelling is not removed, this development permit is not valid for the new house. Um, so, so they do need to follow up and, and meet all those conditions and, and, and are right now under our current framework and our current land use bylaw, the uh, uh, ramifications and the remedy to that is to, you know, send notice to them and let them know that they haven't met the terms of their development permit conditions. And should they not uh, see eye to eye with that, issuing a stop order on the parcel so nothing else would be permitted to happen until such time they went back and, and cleaned up those issues from the previous development permit. Um, as for the security, um, I, I don't have an answer for that off the top of my head. Uh, uh, Councillor Phillipson was correct. You, you know, that security has been taken to ensure um, older older homes, previously lived in homes are moved in, are situated on site as per the development permit, are situated on site and have approved um, building permits, uh, plumbing permits, electrical permits. And we go back uh, to what we just discussed in the previous application, those are the permits under the Alberta Safety Codes Council that are, are dealing with the safety on site of, of the various construction activities. Um, so uh, that was a, a lot of information, probably 
not not much direction but uh we are working on all of these things but i think we're talking about a number of different situations between enforcement conditions of development permits securities and what are they for um and and, and we are continuing uh, as administration to have those discussions with our consultants through the land use bylaw creation and, and hopefully uh before too long we're going to have a consolidated draft to to share with the steering committee and council and, and receive further direction on how council sees some of this stuff being handled but long story short in this situation when we uh, say removal as a condition of the development permit because that's what they said they were going to do I, I think we have an obligation to to ensure that that it's done in, in the end okay no that's helpful Jeff it certainly is to me anyway Lionel Well, my, I guess my concern was that in the past we have to, had to deal with some cleanups that, that the, the developers didn't do themselves. And if we allow, if we don't enforce the fact that this removal has to take place, don't forget the building that's coming in here is not a new building. So they're bringing in a 20 year old building already. So I, I, I think we need to get some teeth and ensure that these the old dwellings have been removed somehow. Um, just to, I, I don't know exactly how we do that yet, but no. And, and my my what I'm hearing from Jeff is we don't have the ability right now to do that either, and that that is being discussed. And Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, I think we do have the ability to do it, I, and I think we have done it to some varying degree historically and, and up to present day. However, we are definitely working on improving our processes and, and tracking those and documenting those processes to ensure we have all, all the information together. And, 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 you know, we do end up saying, yes, this, this permit has met and satisfied its conditions. And, and, and the way in which we do that and, and how what extent we go to ensure this and enforce that it is kind of the discussions that we're undertaking right now and, and trying to come up with a solution that, that works for us and works with the direction of council. Maria. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Person, um, just uh, for MPC's information, the, the current um, bylaw says that um, MPC may require a security deposit of a minimum of $5,000 to a maximum value of up to 50% of the assessed value of the building to ensure that the conditions of the development permit are met. So in this case, we can hold $5,000 as a minimum or 50% of the value until the building is removed. And we can do that um, for any application that is presented to MPC should, should they feel the need to, to do that. Okay. Without any additional statements as far as the recommendation here is concerned, Maria? Um, no, I, I think Jeff, Jeff covered everything. Um, I think that in this case, if the applicant wanted to keep that building, then this application should have been presented as a second dwelling and it wasn't. So if this <laughs> is not removed, then they are in contravention of their development permit. And then we can remedy that via a stop order. Okay. Kelly. <coughs> <laughs> so um, I'm wondering if F should not be reworded um, to make, I mean, it says quite clearly that the $5,000 will be returned upon safety codes approval. So if we just clear up F uh, to, to in alignment with what uh, our discussion is, would that not fix, um, just refer to bylaw 1892.17 that Maria referenced? 
and take out the second sentence that refers to safety codes, I would be happy with that. I'm not, can someone tell me exactly what the wording would be then? So F, under conditions of development, that yeah. the developer provide a $5,000 security deposit as the minimum required amount under bylaw 1892.17, period, and take out the second sentence. Because the way it is worded here, as safety codes approve it, they are going to get their $5,000 back. And the way our discussion is going, we would like to maintain that $5,000 to ensure all conditions are met. So it's very, it's a, it's a quick, it's a, Removal of one sentence. So what kind of wording do we have that the 5000 when the $5,000 is, is refunded? Where is that? You refer, you, you refer to bylaw 1892.17, where it says that the 5000 will be refunded, or you can add it, I don't care. But the bylaw clearly states the 5,000 will be returned upon conditions met, according to what Maria just read us. Jeff? I, I, I believe Councillor Christman's comments to be true there. If we remove the second sentence in point F, then, then we would have the ability to uh, hold on to that security until such time they met all the conditions of their development permit. Okay. Tracy? I, I still think though in there, under those conditions that we need to have that it was in, that in, inspection has been passed by our by the safety codes officer but i think at the end of it where it says the security deposit will be removed if you take that out because we want it handled by our bylaw but we also want to make sure that it's inspected so but it in this in this sentence it just talks about that as soon as it's got safety approval the refund will be um taken out but if you take that the security deposit will be refunded off after uh, and you could say approval must be obtained by a safety code officer that would be fine too i would be fine with that as the mover of the motion okay what have we got someone want to clarify that again now so I move that we remove under section F after the comma. Instead of a comma, put a period at the end of that sentence. And so my motion is to approve with that add to the condition. Can you repeat that for me, Kelly? I just, I was at the wrong okay. point there. After county safety codes officer, put a period, and remove okay. the remaining, the remaining words. So what's the purpose of having once development has passed inspection by the county safety codes officer? Oh, oh, I see. You're, you're yeah. What, what's the purpose of that? Just well, that 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 I guess is. I mean, it doesn't mean anything, does it? 
No, that's why I thought the entire sentence could come out. According to our bylaw, our bylaw clears everything up. So what, what happens if you say once the development is passed inspection by the county safety codes officer and the condi all conditions are met, the security budget will be refunded? That's what we're after. Why don't you say that? Do you want to set a precedent with this one? I mean, that's MPC. I'm just asking. But that's what you're doing. Jeff? No. I, I, I really appreciate the, the conversation because the, this is great conversation on security and, and we've discussed it a little bit going forward as well. Um, I, I, I would recommend that, that uh, if we are collecting the $5,000 security deposit, um, we, we do hold on to it till all conditions of the permit have been satisfied. Um, I, I do not believe that that sentence would require uh, be required to talk about um, safety codes or, or safety codes officer. I believe we would be fine by saying that the developer shall provide a $5,000 security deposit as the minimum required under the county land use bylaw 1892-17 period and, and leave it at that. You'll see in the general information for developer regulations and codes underneath there that all Alberta building codes and safety codes where applicable and by nature of what this development is, it will under under the safety codes act require those permits so I, I think we're safe to remove the reference in the conditions to uh the safety codes inspection and um and uh just leave it at they will supply the five thousand dollars under the terms of the land use bylaw and 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 in 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 doing this we we would take this uh, as a bit of direction and um you know work that condition so it, it reads that way moving forward and uh put a, a process in place where we will follow up with the conditions on these previously lived in dwellings where we are collecting the security to ensure in the interim until we get our processes flanged out with the new land use bylaw and the direction on that that they will meet them and we will refund it once the conditions have been met and that will include approved safety codes permits where applicable i like that Clarification necessary for anyone? Any clear what's happening here? When we're removing that sentence, we feel we're being that that covers. Yes, Molly. Um, I don't want to prolong prolong this conversation, but I would just uh, it concerns me that all of a sudden we're doing a, a sort of one off thing. Um, so I will be voting against this. Just just so you know. That's all. Yeah, no, I, I understand, but I guess if it does, we have, we've had some direction from a number of people and we've had some, some discussion. If it uh, doesn't pass, I guess we'll go back to the old one if, that, if a lot of us are uncomfortable. Do you want to send the president now or do you want to wait till we've had the discussion later? That's basically what it's, Anne-Marie? Well, I'm still a little bit confused about the precedent that we're setting, because the way Maria read the bylaw, we're okay. We just have never maybe enforced it in the past. So, I Yeah. Um, yeah. Kelly? I, I totally agree. I mean, the bylaw clearly states the direction. There is no precedent here through the chair. Um, we, need to, we need to stop that line of thinking. It is clearly stated in the bylaw that the $5,000 is collected to, to ensure our conditions are met. Yeah, and why well, have conditions if you're not enforcing them? So. Anyone else? So we are removing the last part of F. 
which makes it clear that we want conditions to be met before the refund. And that's what we will be voting on. That is my motion, sir. Yep. Questions, anyone? Everyone's clear? As mud? We're really clear? <laughs> Are we ready for the question? Anyone have anything else to add? I hate to prolong it, but I want to make sure I'm not overstepping my bounds. All in favor as recommended with the removal of that last sentence in F. Opposed? I've got one, two opposed. Make sure your hands are up, please. Okay, then I will call a motion passed. Okay, I thought this was going to be a short meeting and I will never think that again. Um, third one, Shauna Lee. 2021026 two, is for the installation of roof mount solar panels. In acreage residential, an individual solar panel installation is a discretionary use. There is no variance re variances requested. The applicant is installing the panels to service his own parcel and will not be selling ener any energy back to the grid. There was no issues or concerns from staff. There was no response from adjacent landowners and we're recommending approval with conditions. Questions, anyone? Clarification? Lionel? Well, since we're working on conditions today, I'm gonna go, <laughs> I'm gonna go to condition F again, and which states four panels must be located such that they do not create undue glare on neighboring parcels. So is that suggesting that these that that there could be glare from them at our at our last hearing for elemental they spent an, a, a large amount of time dealing with glare from soil, solar panels and it was determined there that there is no glare solar panels are designed to absorb sunlight not reflect it and so for us to put a suggestion there that there could be glare I think is a mistake personally. I'd like to not see that as one of the conditions. So you're saying Lionel that that glare is not a is not a manner or condition or a that's not the word is not caused by how they're placed but are caused by if they're made correctly. Is that, is that what you're... Solar panels do not produce glare. Okay. They absorb sunlight, they do not reflect it. Okay, so and, and if there is glare, they've been, they've been made in the wrong manner. And we're not going to get into that. That's basically correct, yes. Maria? Thank you. I, I can't speak to glare or no glare, but this condition does come directly from the land use bylaw. Um, and, and that is why it is now in here. Um, and I believe the reasoning for including this condition is if there is a complaint from a neighboring landowner or someone from the road, then we can use this to to pursue um, some remediation or re remedy if if required. Yeah, either something to block the glare or whatever. Yeah. Anne Marie. Well, after that, I'm ready to make the motion. Thank you. But I will throw it open to further discussion. Anne Marie has made the motion. Any further clarification necessary? Councillor Avalon, I, yes. I just wanted to confirm if the motion is with F removed or if F is staying. F is staying. Yes. Okay. 
Right, Anne Marie? Okay. Anything further? Are you ready for the question? All in favor? Anyone opposed? That is passed. We had no post agenda items and nothing in camera. We had some information items according to our agenda. And then I will go on to question period. Is there, are there any further questions or comments? If not, thank you everyone and I will adjourn the meeting.